Hi, class. Today we're going to be starting a new scientific experiment uh, about crickets. We're going to be using a web-based activity on this link down here, Scientific Method Cricket Lab. Okay, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But basically your question is, uh, so some say that if you listen to the sound of crickets chirping, you can determine the temperature. Is this true? It's just an urban science legend. Do any other factors affect how fast cricket will chirp, such as humidity, wind, atmosphere, pressure? atmospheric pressure or nearby crickets. So you're going to pick one of those questions and you're going to write just that question, right? So you're going to get rid of all this when you decide on your question. So does humidity affect the rate at which a cricket will chirp? Does wind speed affect the rate at which a cricket will chirp? Does atmospheric pressure? And so on and so forth. It's your choice, okay? Uh, the abstract's going to be a summary of everything you did, including your question and your hypothesis down below. Okay, and briefly what you did. Um, you, something new this time, you're, you're going to have to reference what you say. So you're gonna learn some information about crickets while you're doing this experiment. It's gonna be in the collect uh, information portion or the research portion. And so you can include some of that information in here as well, okay? And so again, you're gonna be using this website to get there. Okay, so let's click on the website. Let's see what it looks like, okay. And so if it doesn't open right away, you're going to click enable with Adobe Flash Player and click allow. And when you do that, it's going to come up. So it's uh, here are the authors, by the way, uh, Wayne Williams, Paul Williams, and the most current author is Betsy Cooper, along with Heidi Lee. And that's going to be important later on when we talk about uh, resources. So let's begin. You can go through the tutorial. I recommend it, especially if you're struggling with the scientific method. It will go through all these different, uh, all of these parts of the scientific method and talk to you again about how to do that. I'm not going to go through that, but if you want to, you can. I'm going to click on the cricket button over here, which is going to bring me through the experiment. Okay. So here's the introduction, right? So it's telling you what we're going to be doing. Okay. I'm going to go logically in order. I think that makes the most sense to find the problem. Okay. And so now it gives you a scenario, right? Crickets chirping. You're not actually going to hear the cricket chirp. I don't know why there's no sound effect. I thought that would have been nice, but there isn't. So don't try to adjust your volume on that. Okay, I'm going to go through kind of fast on this because I don't want uh, to bog down. You can go through and reread this. Okay. I want to get to the how to write up the rest of the lab. So again, this is still the defining the problem. And so, okay, you're gonna come up with a problem statement, right? Okay, and I think this is probably a good one. And I guess I chose the right one, good. Okay, now we're gonna go next and we're gonna start collecting information. This is the stuff you can use in your abstract, right? From reading articles, references, books, we get some information, okay? So when you can include some of this or not include this, uh, definitely include some of it in your abstract, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cite this website, okay, uh, as your reference, okay? And so I just wanna go back to that for a minute and go to our, okay, so in here, the author again, if you remember correctly, was Cooper. So at the end of saying a whole bunch of stuff about crickets and you know what you think and why you did the experiment, you're going to put in parentheses Cooper 2020 at the end of one of your sentences uh, where you're just relating that information. And that's how it's done in a real scientific paper. So I wanna give you practice with that. Okay, so I already kind of gave it to you. You just have to figure out where to put it. Uh, again, when you're starting to reference things from that website, that's where you're gonna include it at the end. Okay, so uh, you're going to, again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you, but you're going to pick one, uh, one of the, you're going to make a hypothesis based on what you chose. So it's your best educated idea. Make sure you include an if-then statement, which will make sure your hypothesis is testable. For example, I think that, and the environment factor you are using, so let's pick uh, wind speed, right? I think that wind speed affects the rate at which crickets chirp. If the wind speed increases, then the crickets chirping rate will and I could then finish that with increase or decrease or say whatever I wanted to say. 
So that would be an example. You could choose temperature or any of the other uh, scenarios given to you on the cricket activity. Okay. Experimental design. Certainly you're going to list uh, the website that you use there, right? Um, materials and equipment. It, at some point it's going to talk to you about the BBC lab. Okay. Let's see if we can get to that part. So we're formulating a hypothesis. Okay, so, so again, you're going to pick one, air temperature, atmosphere, pressure, humidity, number of crickets nearby, wind speed. I'm going to pick, for this one, I'll pick uh, wind speed. Okay, and you're going to say what you think is going to happen based on the wind speed, right, before you do the experiment. Okay, and everything else should be kept the same, so they should not be varied. Okay. And here's some information, independent variables, wind speeds. So make sure you take note of all these things. Okay. And we're getting to perform the experiment. And it's the, uh, we'll conduct in the GCC biology lab, where all environmental factors will be controlled. So that's the part I wanted you to see. Uh, what was that, GGC? I wrote the wrong name down. Looks like. Uh, GCC, GCC, okay. So I gotta change that. GCC, there we go. All right. Procedure, you're gonna kind of go through the experiment and uh, decide what you did, okay? And again, your manipulated responding and control variables, okay? Keep going. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You're going to make up a data table. So you're going to be, you know, it's you're going to go through the experiment. You're going to realize you're going to keep generating data. You definitely want to do that more than once. So make up a data table, right? So again, when you're ready to make your data table uh, in your results section, you're going to put your cursor down at the end of your writing. You get at the end here. And you're going to go insert and wrap the table and pick the rows and columns you think you need. You can always adjust that a little bit later by deleting them, but you want to start to make your table. If you want to just do your table right in Google Sheets, that's not a bad idea either because you're going to be making a conclusion from there, right? So keep that in mind. And then when you're all done with your experiment based on what you chose, you're going to use the recall method to make a conclusion, okay? And I'm gonna make another video to show you how to cite resources. So uh, we'll do that in another video, okay?